It's time to predict the scores for week four of this 2023-2024 Premier League season. Now, last week, Nathan, another great score by yourself, but top scorer in the league with a fantastic score of 15 points with Robster, and he also had two perfect scores as well. How that affects the overall leaderboard, well, Nathan, for the third week on the trot, you're doing really well. 41 and a half points at the top of the table and eight perfect scores to boot. So if we drill down into that, you can see that you're currently 228 out of 23,846 people in the UK. And from the global audience of 66,692 players, you are in 515th spot. So fantastic going, but it's week four we're gonna concentrate on. So let's make the predictions for week four. Okay, so first up, we have got the Friday night game between Luton Town and West Ham. Now, first game, first top flight game at Kenilworth Road since I think it's about 1991-1992. If that West Ham, of course, um, coming into this one undefeated after picking up a very, very good victory, you could say, against Brighton 3-1. I thought they played uh, fairly well on the counter-attack in that one. Not much possession, but completely obliterated Brighton in the end. Whereas Luton did show a good offering at times against Chelsea, but so far it's been a 4-1 and a 3-0 loss. So, unfortunately, I think that trend is going to settle in for a little bit longer considering the start of the season that they've had. And I think West Ham will do it again, so I'm going to go 2-1. Yeah, at this early stage of the season, West Ham have done very, very well. A lot of people, I know it's been said on lots of videos and all sorts of things, uh, expecting West Ham to struggle, especially with European football again. Two wins out of three, a fantastic victory away against Brighton. Who, who would have thought that uh, going into that match against the uh, Seagulls last time out? And Luton, as you say, struggling slightly. They only played two matches, but, uh, or they, uh, but find themselves at the foot of the table only scoring one goal. I can see only one winner in this one. It will be the Hammers, but I think it'll be narrow because they will be playing in front of their home fans and there'll be a red hot atmosphere there at Kenilworth Road. So I'm gonna go for a 2-1 away victory to the Hammers. Next up we've got the first of the Saturday fixtures which takes place at half past 12, live on TNT Sports in the UK. Sheffield United coming up against Everton. Now Everton, rock bottom of the league, no goals scored. However- Six goals against. That's right. How Shocking. Ever Beto is coming in from Udinese. Something in our region of around about 40 million. Hopefully he'll get amongst the goals. They are creating opportunities, but not putting the ball in the back of the net. Sheffield United, a very good performance against Manchester City, although they couldn't really get out of their half for a lot of that fixture. And uh, Man City didn't really create a, a massive amount of chances. So in this one, I think it's going to be tight at home. For the Blades, this is a game which they'll really want to target six, uh, three points, even though this is a six-pointer. So I'm going to go for a Blades victory in this, this one. Sheffield United won Everton nil. Interesting. I was thinking that as well, considering the way that Everton have been mm. playing. However, I can just see a stalemate in this one because at the end of the day, it seemed like Sheffield United compared to their other performances have been a lot more up for it, especially yeah. against Manchester City as well especially with the way they started against Palace. And I thought they were right against Nottingham Forest, to be fair, but victory's going to come at some point, but I'm going to go a nil-nil draw. Yeah, no goals again there. Exactly. Anyway, moving on. Next up, we've got the three o'clock. First up, Brentford against Bournemouth. Don't know which way this one's going to come from. Uh, Bournemouth have had a decent start to the season considering uh, some of their recent results. I mean, it's been against Liverpool, Tottenham mm -hmm. and West Ham and look where they are all in the league. But they have kept the scoreline down, whereas Brentford, they do love a draw. And I think, especially with the way that they played against Palace as well, I think it's going to be another one at 1-1. One, one. One, one. Well, I'm going to go for a home victory to the Bees in this one. I saw enough against Crystal Palace, OK, um, as they had a couple of chances in, in that fixture. But Wissa missed a, mm -hmm. a header, which he could have put away. So they didn't really create as much as they usually do, I, I feel, Brentford in that one. But against Bournemouth, who've only picked up one point so far this season, on the road, okay, they've had difficult fixtures as you mentioned, and this is another difficult one. Free flow in Brentford. I'm going to go for a two-nil home win, and then next up we've got Burnley coming playing against Spurs. Spurs have started really good, 
Madison's back now. Mm. We thought, well, he didn't really go away, did he? Everybody thought he was going to be injured for the last fixture, and he wasn't, and he scored in that game. They currently find themselves in third position. Spurs, back-to-back 2-0 wins against Manchester United and Bournemouth. Both very good wins. Burnley currently... Uh, third from bottom, okay, they've only played two matches, only one goal scored, a defeat against Aston Villa. A- Aston Villa were rampant in that match. Oh, they were excellent. So, in this one, I think Spurs will just be too strong for them. Defensively, Spurs looking very good as well at the moment. So, I'm going to go for a 2-0 away victory to the Whites. Yeah, gone exactly the same thing, um, especially with Ange Postecoglou's style of play. Yep. It's massively given the Premier League a, a fresh breath, a breath of fresh air, really, you could say. I know... But Burnley coming into it have had a really tough start to the season, especially against an excellent Aston Villa side, and then obviously in Man City is Man City. So you can't really make a judgment of it. So probably go with what we've seen so far with Spurs, so I'm going to go 2-0. Moving on next up, we've got Chelsea up against Nottingham Forest. Now Chelsea getting their first victory on the board against Luton, where I thought they looked fairly good in patches. Luton mm-hmm. can't really make an assessment, as you said, because of their starts of the season they've had. Two away games, and then obviously against Brighton and Chelsea. So that's a difficult start, that is... Whereas Forrest have been really impressed with the way they've been playing. Owoni's getting amongst the goals. Yeah, Had some difficult fixtures, but they, they look great. Going to go for a high-scoring one in this one, and I actually think Forrest are going to wow. take a point off Chelsea wow. on the road, even though it has been two from two. However, looking against Arsenal and could have taken a point, and same against Manchester United, where they should have taken all three points. So I'm going to go Desmond's 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, well, not in a Forrest away form. has really carried on as it did last year, this year two defeats on the on the road last year. I think they only won once on the yeah. road for the entire season. Playing a Chelsea team with Roy Him Sterling. He's got a new lease of life, haven't he? Scoring mm. a couple of goals in that fixture against Luton. Defensively, okay, they've got injuries, but they they've the, the young stars there are looking good yeah. as well. So I'm going to have to give this one to Chelsea. I think they'll get another three goals in this one, but I do see conceding one because of Awanye. I think well, yeah. is scoring for fun. So I'm going to go for a 3-1 victory to Chelsea. And there's still those rumours about Brendan Johnson going to Spurs as well. I don't think that'll happen. We'll see. Man City next step we've got against Fulham. Now, Fulham, an excellent draw against Arsenal last time. Paulinho back from injuries. Mm-hmm. And that was a real Brilliant. boost in the middle of the park. Okay, I think they got a player sent off in that fixture as well. Mm-hmm. Manchester City found it real, really difficult to break down uh, Sheffield United in that, their last fixture, and it was one-one until well into injury and time, added time as well. He did. So if he just scored that, maybe the floodgates would have opened. But I think Kevin, they're missing a bit of De Bruyne and magic in the middle yep. of in midfield. Although Foden came off the bench and set up uh, the, 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 their second goal there. So I am going to go for a Man City victory, but it's not going to be a stuff in like they would have done possibly yep. last season. Saying that, it was only 2-1 last season mm. in this fixture. But I think they'll keep a clean sheet in this one. Man City, I don't think they've conceded. Oh, no, they've conceded one goal against Sheffield United, haven't they? So I'm going to go for a 2-0 home victory. Yeah, I can see one slipping through from Fulham, to be honest. I do think it'll be three goals yet again. Uh, they have been modest with their scoring this season, Man City. We haven't seen a 4-0 just as yet, but I know that's coming. So... Yeah, let's go 3-1. Okay, so moving on next, we've got the half past five. And now, who'd you go with this one? Brighton against Newcastle. Yeah. Newcastle, obviously absolutely ridiculous against Aston Villa, but it sort of dropped off a little bit. But they have played against Man City and Liverpool, where they've given them both good games. And then Brighton, I don't even know what happened against West Ham in that one. 70-80% possession, yeah, ended up getting battered on the counter-attack. So, I think Newcastle are going to overrun them a little bit, but I think De is going to tighten up a tad. So, I think... Let's edge it to Newcastle slightly too. Uh, we yeah. all know about Newcastle traditionally not doing well down south. However, yeah, this this one's got Newcastle win written all over it for me. Yeah, Brighton really need to keep this one tight. I know it ended up nil nil last season. Could yeah. see uh, um, a repeat that scoreline. However, I am gonna put a load of goals in this one. I think there'll be four all together. Brighton will need to bounce back. They had lots of possession last week. Newcastle, probably one of the better teams for counter-attacking. Lots of pace up front. Defensively, I think they've got a couple of injuries there. Newcastle mm-hmm. is a Botman, if I can remember rightly. But uh, yeah, half past five on Sky, Saturday evening, tea time. People tucking into their evening meal after <laughs> watching the three o'clocks, etc. So I'm gonna go for a Brighton win, three one. Moving on to the Sunday fixtures, we've got Crystal Palace coming up against Wolves. Wolves, 
first victory of the season that last time I got back against Everton, but Everton can't score, really can gone. they? And I had actually had that a perfect prediction on that one. Crystal Palace carving out that that one one draw. Uh, with Brentford away, and they look look good. Edward with a decent free kick, but not scoring. Eze as well. Wolves keeping things tight. I think it's going to be another tight fixture, but I am going to give it to Crystal Palace because they are playing at home. I'm going to go for a two-one home victory. Yeah, this is going to Palace for me. I think they're going to uh, end up keeping their second clean sheet of the season. Wolves-wise, they did get that first victory against Everton. They're not really scoring that many goals, which is a bit worrying, especially if Palace go the way they have been on the counter-attack and grinding out as they have been. And I think they can actually sneak two here. I'm actually going to go 2-0 to Palace in this one. Next, I've got Liverpool up against Aston Villa. Now, which way do you go with this one? Villa starting the season like a house on fire, you could say. Uh, minus that certain Newcastle result. And Liverpool have also had a good start as well, uh, getting that slight 2-1 victory against Newcastle, you could say, as well, with that Nunez goal at the uh, at the end. Don't know which way to take it with this one. However, you know what? I actually think Villa are going to get a point out of Liverpool at Anfield. I'm going to go 1-1. Yeah, I'm going to go for a draw as well in this one. I'm going to go Desmond's, though. Liverpool coming back from 1-0 down against Newcastle. And Almiron might be hitting the post in that one, so it could have been worse. And they had a player sent off, so did really well to get all three points in that fixture. Aston Villa looking great after that to open in a day defeat. So, yeah, lots of goals. And I'm going to go for a 2 true draw. And the final fixture of this game week and before the international mm -hmm. super break sees Arsenal take on Manchester United at the Emirates Man United not looking too clever at the moment okay they, they came back Only against Nottingham though. Forest to win 3-2 they're not looking the best at the moment I think Rashford's now out there on the left yeah uh, Fernandez is looking decent or he did in the last fixture defensively Arsenal, all over the place though Arsenal though a, only a draw against Fulham with the array of talent they've got so uh, this one's going to be awfully tight but with home advantage at the Emirates I'm going to give this one to Arsenal and go for a 2-1 home victory to the Gunners for me this has got Arsenal win screaming all over it I mean should have beaten Forest. I mean, going into that game against Forest, expecting to win, very nearly got beaten and should have got beaten, got dispatched against Tottenham, same again against Wolves, not impressed, 2-0 Arsenal. Yeah, that Man United defence is leaky, leaky, leaky. So, international break is coming up, so there's a, a break of a couple of weeks, yep. isn't there, Nathan? Uh, Wales, are there going to be any vlogs coming up? Uh, yeah, there'll be the uh, South Korea one, won't they, next Thursday. Fantastic. Make sure... Super. In the meantime, you get your predictions in Uva at the Super Brew website. And also leave us a comment as well below who you think is doing well in the Premier League at the moment. Leave your predictions down there as well. Let's see if we can all catch up with Nathan at the top of the leaderboard. But for now, we'll bid you farewell. Enjoy the Premier League over the weekend and the international break. Whoever you follow in the world, whoever you support, and we'll see you all next time. Oh, creepers, creepers. So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay. I think I'm going crazy. Don't think I'll get on safe. So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face. I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face.